wanted to give you guys a chance to understand a little bit better what's happening with this brand new car and these brand new engines. So, okay. so we wanted to bring in a couple of experts, um, but we got Tony instead. Um. Nobody's perfect, right? <laughs> Nobody wanted to come, so I said, I'll do it. Just wait, I'll make, it I'll make you look real good here. <laughs> but we do have Tony Kanan and John Boslog, who's the team manager for Penske here. They can talk a little bit about the new car, take some questions from the media, as well as the fans. So if you have a question, raise your hand. We have Jennifer with a microphone out in the audience. So I'll open up with General. I mean, this is an entirely new package that you've ever been here with before. Engines, brakes, bodywork, everything. And I know you haven't been on this track yet with it, but you've been, I know, you've done some other testing. What, what are the biggest changes you've experienced? Well, first of all, I want to thank you. Thank you guys for coming. I mean, it feels like a race weekend and uh, having a... Uh, and, uh, you know, I brought Rubens to drive my car today and then uh, he asked me if uh, every track we go, we see this. I said, well, just in the video. So, basically... Uh, but uh, now this year, I mean, for some of you guys, you know, that are not very familiar with, we obviously change cars completely, change engines. It's we went from a normally aspirated engine to a turbo. And one of the biggest changes that we have, apart from the turbo, is we have carbon brakes now on this type of tracks. Which last year we had steel brakes for the road and street courses and carbon brakes for the ovals. Carbon brakes are much more expensive if you order one in your normal street car and you're gonna find out that uh, they stop a lot more but they cost a lot more so those are one of the things that uh, in the car because of the technology we felt that we had to go to um, and you know those are a big difference it's for us driving the car obviously I haven't driven here yet but at the other tracks the power of stopping it's a lot a lot more and for me it was the biggest impression when I drove the car how much deeper I could drive into the corners and how much quicker the brakes would come up so uh, those are things and the turbo engines which I have driven them many years ago uh, I personally love it I think it's a great addition to the series so I think those are the two biggest changes in my opinion that we had from last year's car to this year's car. And John I know this has been a big change that crosses over to this new car are the wheels. That's it. Everything else is different. Uh, what I did, we tried to get a car here for you to look at. Uh, unfortunately, track testing is at premium right now, so I stole the piece, which is Will Power's steering wheel. And one thing that is quite different that the drivers may be... Here, let me hold on to that. <laughs> is the uh, the addition of the hand clutch. And uh, as you'll notice, Clutch, which is a yeah, two, yeah, both sides. Does your you have <laughs> oh, okay. so you can explain it to them? I'm helping you out. Bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, the clutch is they, they we have both sides because what's happening is when you turn leaving the pits, sometimes you're leaving this way, so you have this hand, or if you're leaving this way, so basically you can, you can play with both. And also at the top there, he's got the shift paddles. Left is left is down, right is up, and uh, they're pretty busy in the car with that. Uh, the addition of the hand clutch and then trying to grab a gear, that is, uh, they're busy in there. Uh, as far as this, the, yeah, he's playing with the mixture switch. He's trying to mess us up now. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of buttons. It's it's. Uh, It's an overtake button, there's reverse, there's a mixture switch, pages, um, the steering wheel, they've, they've gotten quite pricey over the years. We're, we're looking at between fifteen dollars and $20,000 for this particular unit here. If you give me five right now, you can have <laughs> and, then, and then all the drivers, they, gotta, they like to have their personal little grip on there. Will, Will likes his big grips. So, but uh, 
anyway, that's. You want to add anything to that? No, I think uh, you know you said it all. But uh, obviously, this is a. Uh, in, in our streetcar, we have uh, you know the steering wheel, then you have your dash. Everything in the car is in here. So one thing. Can you hold the microphone? Uh, one thing that. Uh, number that you're in. Don't you look so bad right now. So see, he probably hit all those lights and he hit the limiter, but then you know the gear that you're in. <laughs> Thanks, uh, whoever that was. That was Rubens. <laughs> in my car. Time to pit, would you? Uh, we have lap time, we have all the information we need, we have it in this which obviously it's connect with quick release that all the information goes and when you put the stereo in you have this thing lights up and it's it's pretty fun I mean you have pages and it looks like if you look at it, it looks like a video game but uh, you know it's like like John was saying it's, uh, it's really expensive uh, when we get mad when something happens we have the tendency to throw the stereo away from us and uh, that's not good so uh, I'll give you a little background on why the why the steering wheel is is separate from the from the car now because years ago when Tony was a younger man the, the steering wheel was tethered by the radio cord well the drivers would get upset and they throw the steering wheel well the steering wheel would come back and hit him in the head right yeah so and, and <laughs> now what they do they, they made it nice so we can through the steering wheel, but now we're connected through the radio and our neck to the car. So you, nowadays you threw the steering wheel away and you try to get out of the car and all of a sudden you can feel your neck going. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess uh, we can buy another, it's cheaper to buy a steering wheel than actually go to the chiropractor. So. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. We'll start here in the front with the media folks. If you guys have any questions, raise your hand, and then we'll uh, open it up to some fan questions. Tony, the early feedback on the new car related a lot to balance, how drivers felt coming either into a corner or exiting a corner, and, and some of the drivers described some scary moments. Uh, now we've had a, a couple of tests. How do you feel about the car? Is it coming to you more and you know, settling down a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, race car drivers complain all the time. That's what we do, right? Here on the pole, and you're just not beat our everybody guys. Our by guys don't. <laughs> no. Our three guys are fantastic. <laughs> you just beat somebody by half a second and then you come in and the engineer asks, how's the car? Oh man, it's horrible. So to answer your question, I think the concerns that, that we had, it was more in the ovals than actually in the road street courses. Um, and obviously I we done a lot of the winter testing between me and Will developing the car for Chevrolet and in the beginning it was just different and because somebody told us that the weight distribution of the car was different you already planned something in the driver's head that we have something to complain and pick about it right so if we didn't know we were just gonna say wow it's different here different there but already somebody already had told us what was different from last year's car and I think it was we probably jump ahead and complain a little bit too much in the beginning I'm not trying to make it easier in the ovals we still have a couple things that we need to sort it out we just came back from Texas a couple days ago but for for road and street courses we're already faster than last year Delara made a lot of changes that we worked together with with the series to, uh, to change the, the way that a car was born and you know this is a this is what happens when you spend nine years with the same car you get so comfortable you get something different and if it's not meeting up the standards that you believe that it has to be, people already complain. And, and in my opinion, I think that's part of the development. If the car was born as good as it needs to be, then what are we going to do? You know, just, we don't need engineers, we don't need good drivers, we just... And then that's, to answer your question, I think, yeah, the car was different, but it was different. It's not good or bad, it was just different. Yeah, if I could add to that, that you know, the complaint, joke's about the complaining, but we, that really is, is, is key in development because it's always got to get better. You know, the, the guys, if they, if they say it's okay, well, it's, we're, we, can't, we can't rest on that. You know, it always has to evolve and get better and, and, and improve. So um, you're not that bad. 
Do you have any more I have questions? Have my days. Right. Jordy, thanks. Uh, good to see you again. We're looking forward to the season. Uh, talk about a little bit about how Rubens is doing and what it's going to take for him. Uh, when will we know when he's going to if he's going to come to the IndyCar team? <laughs> you, can, you can ask him that, but for me, he should be here already. Which, I mean, what's going to take and nowadays? Unfortunately, in racing, it's going to take sponsorship. Um, you know, you guys <laughs> what? follow what, what happened to me at the end of 2010. Um, you know, nowadays it doesn't matter how many championships you won. For the same reason, he, he really actually lost his job in Formula 1 and at the beginning of this year because somebody came with the briefcase with a ton of money. And we can't blame anybody. I think teams got to survive, drivers got to survive. Right now, I wish we would have the budget to run him. You know, but I think the team... Uh, I know for a fact because we're still working on sponsorship on my side, on, on EJ's side, and, and he likes it. He wouldn't be here again if he didn't. He wouldn't be testing if he doesn't have the intention to, to find the money to go do it. And I think Brazil right now, uh, our economy, it's, it's definitely uh, better than here. And that's actually a big, big help for, for him as far as finding the sponsorship. He is definitely... A big name down there. 19 years in Formula One. I mean, yeah, I'm famous, but he's he's in another level. So for him, it will probably be easier to to justify finding the budget. So I hope we can have a decision by the end of next week. Um, speaking of, on his behalf, but I think on the team's behalf, uh, we need to make a decision no matter what because we have yeah. You know, we're Lotus. a month away from the first Is race. He no. He used to be. Yeah, I know. I mean, he, got, he will be up here later on. He can answer Lotus the questions for you a lot better. But I'm, I'm talking as a team. Um, I obviously we're really close, so I know a lot of what's going on. I know he has a lot of things on the table, but I kind of create a problem for him because I invite him to do a fun test just for fun to help me out. He liked it, and then then we give him two weeks to find a full budget, which is like between five and six million dollars. So he's like, "Oh, thanks. What a great friend you are." That's what friends are for. <laughs> I invite him to the party, but I'm charging him the catering, the invitation, and everything. Tony, what do you like most about developing a new car from scratch? Man, it's the challenge, you know, to, uh, to sit down with the engineers at the end of the night and, and see, looking at the data and see what can we be better, what do we need to beat these guys, and talk to the engine people, say, look, the engine has a little bit of a, a downside here, well, I would like to be better on the top there, and it's just really the challenge of making it better. There is not a one specific thing that I can say, this is what I like. I like the development. I came from the old school that we all are. Uh, it was about development. The smartest guys, the smart engineers, and, and the drivers that can catch that little thing in the past years because of many reasons uh, to keep everybody alive. We had to kind of stop that. And we kind of went away from it. Which, in a way, you see a lot of the tracks in the, pa in the past year that you didn't need a, really a, a good race car driver to win a race. You just need a, a guy, a, a, the smartest engineer in the paddock just to put a car that was close for you to go win races. And this year, I think it's, it's a lot different. We're developing things and we can make things different. Obviously, we're still keeping on the rules. Uh, the series has done a great job trying to budget a minimum budget or a maximum budget on stuff that you can and you cannot do. And that's how you keep also the, the sponsorship and, and the teams alive with, with the budget. But I, I like the challenge of developing everything. And, and John, what would you say is the most challenging side from the team side in terms of starting from scratch this year? I'd say it's experience. You know, uh, like Tony said, this car, the car we had is... You know, we had, what, eight years we had that car? And you get to the point where you, you come to the racetrack and it's everything's the same. You know, it's the same engine for eight years. It's the same gearbox for, you know, the tires, all that stuff. And and what we talked about at the paddock, you know, before we knew, uh, I've been with the team 25 years. So, you know, in those years, there's a lot of development that happens, a lot of people that experience it. Well, there's a lot of guys, younger guys, that have come into the series, and, and they don't in the last five years. And this is hitting them right in the face. They don't, they don't quite understand. And we told them, "Hey, get ready. It's coming because there's going to be a lot of late hours and, and uh, a lot of sacrifice." And that's 
that's the challenge is uh, for the teams is is the sacrifice, time, commitment, uh, the work. It's it's a lot harder now. Uh, but like he said, it's it's good. It's a great training ground. It's a great challenge for young engineers, uh, young mechanics, you know, crew chiefs, team managers, all you know that have or risen to different levels. So, Tony, there was a question last year about the ratio between the push to pass and the regular horsepower, and that a lot of the drivers wish there was a bigger uh, uh, difference. With the new cars, with the turbos, is there is it about the same difference, or is there actually more horsepower now? We don't have a push to pass this year yet. Uh, so we do have, I believe we do have, engine manufacturers would never tell us how much power they have, especially nowadays that is a big competition. We think it's around 750 horsepower, but our car, our cars are lighter. So, you know, horsepower, people sometimes don't understand it. it. It doesn't really matter how much horsepower you have because it's a weight power relationship as well. So if the car is lighter, it's going to go quicker. It's not just about, so. To answer your question, we don't have a push to pass this year uh, yet because it's a new engine and they're, they're developing. Last year we thought we needed a, a bigger power jump. So this year with the turbo, we will have that once we develop that. By June, they're saying they're going to start to introduce that maybe for this year still or maybe next year. But then you can have it because you can do it with the boost and the turbo. So you will have a bigger discrepancy on the, on the horsepower between the, the normal power and when you use the push to pass. Excellent. Go ahead. Actually, that was my question about push to pass, but I have a related one, Tony. Um, so, is the boost level fixed then, or is there anybody that can tweak it? Uh, no. The series is going to give you a target, and that's what we all got to run. So, basically, uh, they're going to give you a number for the road courses and street courses, one number for the big ovals, and another number for for the short ovals. And, and that's the number that everybody wants to run. It just, they're not, not going to let you, and obviously if you, they give you a target, you don't want to run below it, so just, if you do, <laughs> fine, but but that's that's pretty much the way they're going to keep the competition. Otherwise, it will get more expensive. You know, that's when people ask me why why this, why this regulations. Regulations are, and you, you guys know better than I do, because you, you work on the budgets, I just spend the money, <laughs> <laughs> and the fuel, and the tires. <laughs> But it's to keep costs down. If you open, say you can run any boost you want, the engines are going to spend more, and your manufacturers are going to spend more money to run the max, and that's when you blow engines and this and that. So it will be a fixed number. Tony, one question is: this year, without the uh, double file restart, being someone who used to come from the back pretty well in about two laps, how do you feel about that? Not a you know, like uh, tracks of Fontana or the bigger, larger tracks where it might work better. If I was going to be selfish, I would say I hate it. We need to go back to it. But you got to think about safety and what's good for the entire series. And then I think we've learned, we've tried, we give the, the, the IndyCar a chance, we experienced uh, what's good and what was bad about it. And then I think, you know, tracks like Fontana that you can really pass anytime you want and like Texas and we don't need those I mean it doesn't matter you're gonna pass if you have a better car you're gonna pass the guy regardless why put yourself in risk to tear up the equipment then we're always gonna go back to teams spending money and this and that and and driver safety we saw what happened when we put a bunch of cars together and we don't want to do that and that wasn't a way to avoid that as well so I think we've learned in a, in a very, very personally, in a very hard way, because I lost one of my best friends. But you know, it's it's part of the game, and, and I think that was the reason that we went away from it. We'll take another couple questions, and we'll let these guys go, and we'll bring in the uh, the rest of I'm the drivers. Hungry. I know, me too. Um, and then we'll bring in the rest of the drivers for a Q and A. So just to give you a heads up, go ahead, Bradley. Uh, Tony and John both. Uh, in the past, the single car teams have had a little more trouble coming up to speed than the multi car teams. Now, with the different engine manufacturers involved, do you see that gap getting narrower? Or do you still see the multi car teams having the advantage there? Yeah, I don't. That's a tough one. That's always a, that's always a have and have not thing. Uh, I will say that that uh, as far as speaking for Team Penske. You know we're we're fortunate that we have a lot of guys that are just you know our team is and Roger uh, there's Roger has a saying there's no there's only one job description at Penske Racing and that's work 
and and I think that you, I think if you get a small team, obviously you know KV, we, we call them small teams, but yeah, it has the gap has closed. Yes, I'll, I'll say that. But you know Panther, uh, they're all really good teams and really good hardworking guys, and and you know the effort definitely equals results, which. Um, and and like Tony said, with the budgets and the and the cost gap, that that should make a difference. Um, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that because I've been to a one car team and I jumped from a one car team to a four car team, and then I would say the quantity obviously is a quantity is not quality. So it's if you can't run a multi car team properly, you might as well do a one car team. Because if I've been in a team as well that we had, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> we had four cars and it was four car team, you know, so it was a single team, everybody doing their own thing. So to me, <laughs> the small teams with one car, they will get in trouble more often because when you have a problem with your one car, it's one car over the weekend. You have three cars, you experience one in that car, you're gonna go and you fix it in the next two, and or you go testing, whatever, like, look at these guys, I mean, they tested with Ryan in the oven in Texas, and they came here with Will and Adil tested in Sebring, I believe, Barber. Uh, Barber. So, they had three cars in three different places, and if you're a one car team, you can't, you can't make all those. That's the beauty of it. So, you know, it, I'm not saying, maybe with the new regulations and stuff maybe you, you, you bring that gap closer because now everybody's developing and, and what's good about the the Chevy guys actually we all working together on that we don't obviously share setups and this and that but when it comes to an issue that you think is gonna hurt the whole entire Chevy program we share and we talked and teams help each other out saying look we that happened to us that we think we can so we'll go and fix it, so it becomes a bigger team. But the single car team, it gets hurt, hurt when, you know, when you're on a weekend and you don't have data to share, you don't have another opinion, you're not sharing, um, you know, you, you, one, one of your teammates is in the first session, you're in the second session, you don't know if the track got better, if the track not, that's the advantage of the multi-car team. Tony, uh, last year officiating was a big issue uh, among the drivers and I think some of the teams. And we have a, a new race director in Bo Barfield. I'm just wondering what kind of input and conversations the drivers have had with him before the season starts, if any, and, and maybe what you guys have talked about, if you could share that public. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of conversations with him. Um, as you guys know, we create the Drivers Association, which was a way to or try to get better organized between us because we complain a lot, like I said. So we focus the complaint on three guys, which would be me, Justin, and Daria. We had plenty of conversations, and I think uh, we need to learn from our mistakes. And I have nothing against Barnhart. I think he did an awesome job, but I think our rules last year uh, and some of the stuff that we had on the rules, they were completely, it was a lot of up on their discretion. And discretion, it's not a rule. So. I think we, we brought the concerns to the series. I mean, Barfield has a lot of his plate on his plate because I believe Brian did a great job in many occasions, but like everybody, we all make mistakes. Drivers do, mechanics do, teams do, so officials. But I think it will be better. Um, one thing that it needs to be done, obviously, we need to respect the person that it's running it, and all we ask as drivers is consistency. So you tell me if I can and I cannot, and just don't tell me, oh, I'll decide it when you do it. Because then then I don't know. Can I block? Can I move or, or I cannot? Should I do this? See, if I take somebody out, am I going to get a penalty? Well, we'll see. Depends. <laughs> so that's not a rule. So we ask for the consistency. We, we don't want to write the rules. We, we, we don't want to get involved with it. We don't want to do that because all, our job is to drive the cars and put the best race we can for our teams and for you guys. So just tell us what it is. And that's pretty much what we asked. So it was talked. Thank you. <laughs> you got to thank Dar and Justin too. It wasn't just me. But uh, as long as we understand, and then, then, then we're fine. You know, we like, like it or not, those are the rules and you guys have to follow and we'll do it. Last question here. 
Hey, I just wondered, how do you connect the wiring to the steering wheel? Wiring. It is a tech talk, so it's a good question. I have no clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll show you here in a minute. You can see, it's. You can, can you see that down in there? There's a hole in there. There's a lot of little. There's probably, oh, I don't know, a hundred little wires in there, and well, it's a wiring loom basically, and then, and then the pins. I'm sorry. No, no. There's there's a lot going on in here. There's. I'll show you. It's. Uh, it's, it's quite intricate. And but it all goes to that little hole in there that it has a bunch of... Things. There's like 35 pins in this in this hole here. Okay. It plugs right onto the steering column. Yeah. And all that all the information through the car is fed through... But there's a wiring the, connector in the steering column. Yes, right, okay. right there. I'm pointing it at you. <laughs> Got it. Right in there. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Well, thank you all so much for coming. We'll wrap this Thanks, up guys. in about Thank 10 you. minutes. We're hoping to have all the other drivers here. Uh, so come on back.